Hey, what's up everybody? Thanks for tuning in to my YouTube page and checking out this video, which is part two of the Michael Jordan sort of non-super rare, super premium collection. I've got these little boxes that I keep cards that are not necessarily going to stay in my collection forever and ever and ever, although I've had some of these for a very long time. Uh, the rule is I've got this case with 100 cards in it. Anything in the case technically isn't for sale unless I'm upgrading something or making a big move. All the other cards in my collection, if push comes to shove, they they will be sold, but it doesn't mean I can't enjoy them. And it doesn't mean that I that, that I, I might not ever have to be in position to sell some of these, but, but if it's push comes to shove, the stuff in the 100 card case stays and I kind of scrounge around my other little boxes and pull stuff out to sell as the need warrants. So... That box had some 1993 cards in it. I picked things back up with 1993. I guess I should probably better define which box has what in it, but we are going to go in chronological order. 1993 Finest, while this is a horrifically stupid, unattractive photo of Michael, 1993 Finest is a very key set because it really elevated the trading, the trading card game. Thicker card stock, super glossy card stock, you know, just another key point in card innovation. 1989, we got Upper Deck. 1990 brought a Skybox. 1991 brought a Stadium Club. 1993 Finest was definitely on a different level from production standpoint. This card is very meaningful because it's maybe one of my favorite sports commercials of all time when Nike uh, did this idea that that some some rookie came out of nowhere and signed with the Bulls, and maybe it was Michael Jordan in disguise. Who knows? But he scored 79 points in one quarter. Unfortunately, this commercial only aired once, and I do believe it was during the Super Bowl because Steve Martin, who was an actor in it, uh, he had uh, there was a licensing issue with him. So an iconic sports business moment and a very fun card and a very hard card to get in a PSA 10 because of those black borders. Now, with that being said, this card is rare because of its condition. This card is highly fun in a PSA 8. This card is a lot of fun in a PSA 7. The PSA 10 obviously gives a lot of value, but I bought this like three or four years ago before this whole card market really got nutty. So just because you see something in my collection as a PSA 10, please do not assume that I paid current market for it, nor assume that you need to own it in a PSA 10. Cards can be enjoyed in many different formats and fashions, like this bad boy, for example. Great photo. MJ in the LA Forum against the Lakers with the light coming behind him. I think it's a well, really cool designed uh, card. I just, I just like a lot of the components there, and I like it when you can see the Jordans. Those are the sixes, uh, which is... Obviously, some people love the sixes. I think that sixes are okay. Definitely not one of my favorites, but anytime I can see Jordans, Air Jordans, um, sticking with 1993 Upper Deck, I mean, oh, there's a lot There's a lot to love about this card. I mean, the the glow around, I like all the skylights, and there's some really cool players in it. Like the, the skylights with Sean Kemp with the Space Needle is an outrageously cool card. So... I mean, there's just a lot to love about this card. This is, when I say it's like, this is a sports card, this is a sports card. This is taking graphic design of the time and then transforming it into something that's a little bit more elevated than just a little picture of a man. Slightly more elevated than that. Here's another Upper Deck uh, subset of that broader set. Again, we're looking at some, those are the, I guess I get the six. I guess those are the sevens. I really, I can't believe I don't know that stuff offhand. Skybox did a cool showdown series. I think the coolest one in the showdown series is Bird vs. Magic, but obviously Drexler vs. Jordan is very cool as well. This 1993 Upper Deck preview was a big deal. So knowing that the World Cup was coming to the United States, Upper Deck got the license to make soccer cards for the World Cup. And so they kind of teased, you know, um, teased the hobby that there were some cool honorary captain cards coming. I think Wayne Gretzky was one. I think Joe Montana was another. So I remember this card very vividly when it came out. 
1993 hoops in a very beat up plastic case. Um, so again, just, I like, I like, you know, look, I like all Michael Jordan cards, but when you can find them in the number, in the, uh, some of the more rare all-star jerseys makes it a lot of fun. And then we hit a very cool run of Jordan cards where we get the Jordan 45 jersey. And this is from the game when he made his return. And we get to see the NBA socks with the, the socks, the NBA logo, the uh, Air Jordan 8s, the 45 jersey. And this was from the game where he said, I'm back. So very significant. I got the red version. I got the silver version. Love those bad boys. Flair, you know, on the heels of 1993 finest, um, you know, Michael, the Fleer brought out Flair. So even thicker than Topps Finest, not as much gloss as Topps Finest. It's on a chromium card, just a high gloss card. But love the design, kind of like an action photo behind it and more of a portrait up front. So very happy to own this. And then... And then I forgot that, you know, this, the, the SPs had the, you know, from the press conference after Michael's, you know, first game back. So, man, what, that was, as a fan, that was super cool. Oh, here was, here was, oh, let's do this whole stack. And then another Jordan 45 jersey. Um, this was a subset. I actually pulled this card myself. Uh, the the Skybox Emotion set, I guess, uh, definitely was a thicker set. So card innovation and inserts and stuff were starting to become a much bigger deal. Just love the, the color and how this thing pops. I love that I got it myself. And then, move, I guess I guess when these baseball cards came out before these basketball cards. Um, but, I mean, these, this card, the Silver Signature... And then this, the 94 SP, man, people went nuts trying to find this card. I mean, packs of this stuff were so expensive. I mean, and this Star Rookie set is just crazy. It's got A-Rod in that set as well, the Star Rookie set. So, and then, man, I just some of this stuff just really brings me back. And I like that Jordan has Nike batting gloves, but a Wilson wristband. You know, he could have done, I guess he could have done a Wilson batting glove and a Nike wristband. But anyway, MJ shooting hoops during spring training, shooting a baseball into a bucket of baseballs. Um, before you go into this one, this one I wanted to, I skipped over by accident. Collector's Choice, him playing golf. Uh, he is shooting from the rough. So Michael had an off day. Probably was a, this is probably a picture from the celebrity golf tournament um, in Tahoe which I'd love to have gone to to get his autograph because he was a decent signer out there, apparently, for the autograph hounds. So that's a cool photo of Michael. The 1994 collect Collector's Choice. Collector's Choice, ironically, was a lower-end set. So all the, some companies were introducing high-end sets. Some companies countered by doing some lower-end sets. So Collector's Choice was obviously uh, a great one for us younger collectors versus trying to buy packs of, of, of SP, Upper Deck SP. I love this one because of the uh, San Antonio themed all-star jersey and then the all-white, the patent leather 11s. Another pick, another card that I love because we're seeing the 11s. So, uh, great action shot on 96 Tops Chrome. 96 Tops Chrome changed the game, you know? Um, it really changed the game, and, th and this set means a lot for a lot of different reasons. But um, definitely a super cool one there. SPX, I love SPX. Good, the hologram's getting picked up. You can see the hologram pretty clearly. Again, the 11s, the Jordan kind of hologram right there. With the black jersey, you know, the Michael Jordan and the black jerseys, there are not many of those cards floating around. I actually don't know any off the top of my hand, Ed. Just a cool looking set. You know, the 96 Bulls were obviously uh, a historic team. So having the big three, Rodman, Pippen, and Jordan all on one card, I think is super. The 70 wins. That's a super fun one. 
Uh, then moving into another flare. Flare in like 1996 started adding more of like a metallic sheen to the cards. And I mean, that card just really pops, you know? So you've got like almost like a cutout. It's almost like a raised surface, the, 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 the kind of full color image. And then, you know, the kind of grayed out black and white metallic photo in the background. And what's cool is like they, they would alternate them. So there's some cards where like the action shots, the background and the profiles, the front photo. So flair was, you know, fun to collect because, you know, there was like, the card number, and then like the section row and seat numbers. I actually don't, and this is like the show times. So there was like show time and showcase. I don't remember it all, but I remember how big of a deal it was to try to complete all the different versions. It was it was frustrating for set collectors, but it gave us many more options, uh, which was certainly appreciated. Michael Jordan wearing an old pair of ones in Madison Square Garden. Drop, was this the double nickel game? Was this double nickel? I think this was the double nickel game. But cool above the rim, over the top photo. So, um, did you know four hours before every game, Michael eats a 23 ounce New York steak, either baked potato or mashed potatoes, a salad and ginger ale? I did not know that, that Michael would eat, a, that's a lot. How, how early before the game was he eating that? Um, 98 SP. So I've got a big gap in my collection. I mean, right, like I don't have tons of 90s. I don't have a ton of this, you know, late 90s stuff. Also, when he retired, you know, he was very in control of his license and his likeness. And so there just weren't Michael Jordan cards made until he came back from the Wizards. And I don't think I own any Michael Jordan Wizards cards because, you know, that didn't happen. That was kind of like an imaginary universe. So we skip right to 2005, SP Authentic. I mean, SP just kind of went into this mode of just a very, very clean design. And they had that very clean design for a, for a number of years. So I, I like it. Um, this card's probably 10 bucks raw. So no need to splurge on a 10, you can enjoy it. I, I came across this subset and I fully don't know uh, where exactly it was. It says it was a bonus pack. But it's, you know, there's just not a lot of cards of, of Michael and LeBron. And I love this set because almost every picture you can see their sneakers in the picture. So, and, you know, so like this, they're both driving to the basket. Here, they're both pulling up for a, for a jumper. And then we've got a couple more MJs to round thing up. We've got, we got them finishing up some dunks in that photo. So that, that Michael Jordan LeBron bonus pack subset is one I enjoy for a couple of different reasons, but it's all about having fun. And to me, that's a, that's a, this is a fun little set. Here's another one. And we've got some patent 11. I think they call those the space jams. So, and then here was a Jersey, a game worn Jersey card. I won this in an auction. It was pretty inexpensive. Uh, I don't know what part of the jersey that was because it doesn't actually look like, <laughs> I, I don't know like what part of the jersey that would be, but it was very inexpensive when I won it. So, and then wrapping things up, I won this and it was not super duper expensive either, um, but I thought it was cool because Oscar Robertson, Michael Jordan, game patch jersey, uh, you know, jersey jersey patches, just uh, just something, something a little bit different to have. So... Uh, those are, you know, I don't have a lot of Michael, I don't have a lot of modern Michael cards for a handful of different reasons, but happy to have the ones I do. And, you know, maybe I'll, you know, I think I'm going to maybe try to diversify a little bit, get, get some lower grade ones, get some raw ones, just to have a little bit of something different. You know, I was buying most of these cards well before the big run up. So like I'm in some cards that you just saw, I'm in them for like a hundred dollars and they're worth like $700 now. And so maybe it's one of those, maybe I sell them and downgrade and just enjoy the card for what it is and not because it's a PSA 10. So maybe I'll do that over time, but for the time being, just gonna enjoy my my boxes, my little, my little boxes of graded Michael Jordan cards. Appreciate you tuning in. Um, if you buy what you love, you'll never lose money. So just keep that in mind. Talk to y'all later.